Taurus, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you on no a particular subject. I'm going to do my version of a Celtic cross. At the end, there will be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your second house, this could be for you. You know the drill, guys. Thank you. However you support the channel, it's very much appreciated. Cross watchers, your modern welcome message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Taurus, what's going on? Why do I feel like you're on a mission? What are you on a mission for? Can I end like a decluttering mission? One more. Taurus. What is going on? We have the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is Moon in Sagittarius. The High Priestess meets. You're preparing for something. What are you preparing for? How interesting. It's like you're getting something spruced up. You know, the scarecrows are there to scare away the crows or the birds or the... It's like you... you yeah, it feels like you're, pre you, you're preparing for something, crossing you. Oh, interesting. Root of the matter. Planting those seeds, recent past. Oh, nice. What you want. <laughs> okay, interesting. What's coming in? Nice. How you see yourself. How others see you. <laughs> that makes sense. Advice and potential outcome. Wow. 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 Okay, right. Fantastic. We have the Ace of Wands. There's that final wand to take it to the 10, and then we drop, we, we, we start again. The Nine of Swords, the Page of Swords, the Page of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Two of Swords, and the Ten of Pentacles, and the Lovers. Okay, so, yeah, I think you're, you, it, you're decluttering, you, you, you're going through some sort of, um, it's as if you've been inspired by something. What that is, I have no idea, um, but something feels like it's inspirational. There's a, there's a ones, it's like, you know, lighting a match on something. It's something that just wants to, it's like you know what you want now. And now, if we look at, um, um, the Nine of Wands could represent Chiron. Now, you could have Chiron in Taurus, or you might have Chiron in the second house. It, it, it's currently in Aries, so it's, in, it's transiting your 12th. But there's just something about, it's like you know what you're worth now. It's like you know that, I tell you what this is, this is, this is recognizing frequency. This is recognizing um, everything has an has a charge. We'll call it a charge, an electrical charge, a magnetic charge, whatever you want to to label it as. It's like, for example, you know, nine of wands, nine as as a frequency of nine. It's about closing out cycles. It's about endings. It's about shifting a lot of things. You might be in a nine personal year. Who knows? Um, for that. Add up your birthday and your month, birthday and month, and then add it to the year. So, you know, for me personally, I'm in an eight. No, I'm not. I'm in a five. <laughs> 2024 is an eight year. I was, I was going to say, add your first birthday up and then add the eight, which is the 2024. So I'm in a five personal year. So mine adds up to a, um, adds up to a six. Add the eight equals fourteen breaks down to a five, I'm in a five personal year. So for you guys, you could be a nine, doesn't have to be, but what I'm trying to get at here is, it's like you've recognized something that everything carries a frequency. If you want to 
you know, people carry frequencies, but because we're affected by emotions, frequencies can shift. It's like you've, you find, you've got this epiphany of some kind where you, you're putting faith in things in the sense of, I know that a birch tree has the frequency of um, hope, faith. It's representation of Bacana in the in the runes. Um, Bacana is abundance, it's, it's growth, it's the mother, it's fertility. Because trees don't go through the emotional changes like us humans do, it's fixed. I know the birch tree is that. Obviously, you might not know a birch tree does that, but that you can do your research after this. I know that if I connect with that energy, I am going to receive support in that format. I'm going to go sit with a birch tree. I know that 2024 is an eight year. Eight carries a frequency. It doesn't have the emotions like humans do. It's fixed. Eight is about abundance. It's about karma. It's ruled by Saturn. So I know that this year, if I believe in that frequency and I align to eight, I will create abundance. I step back and let karma do its thing. It's like something has inspired you. Crossing you is the Knight of Cups. Now the Knight of Cups is an energy of some, an offering of some kind. And I feel like energetically you're clearing space for this. So this could be not tolerating anything less than what you deserve not tolerating anything less than what you're worth. This is a decluttering, decluttering your home, decluttering any situations that aren't working for you anymore, weighing up what in your life creates happiness or drama. And you're at a point now where you're really looking at scales. What's coming in? Justice. Scales. If it isn't a hell yes, it's a no. Root of the matter is the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles is the seed. Something tangible is coming into your life. Like I say, this could be an idea. It could be an inspiration. We've got two Aces. Recent past is judgment. This is where I feel like there's an epiphany that's taken place in your life. Yeah, I don't know in what sense. This could be realising that you want to go through the great work. And the reason why I say that is what you want is the Five of Wands. Now, the Five of Wands is Saturn in Leo. The world meets strength. You want to... world is Saturn. Saturn rules lead. Leo rules strength. Leo is gold. That's the alchemy. From lead to gold. It's like you know what you want now. You want to do this journey. You want to get knowledge. The full moon is in Capricorn today. The full moon is in... Um, so Capricorn rules your ninth house, ninth house of spirituality, higher education, tapping into the unseen world in the sense of, um, you know, esoterica. There's, there's something that just seems to have just given you an incentive here. What's coming in, like I say, is ju uh, justice. Justice is coming. Balance of the scales is going to be achieved. And now you're just kind of being told by your higher self or whether you just feel this inspiration to just declutter, to just clear space. It feels like less is more in this way, in this situation, because everything is just about to come to you very, very quickly. How you see yourself is the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is Mercury in Cancer, which is Magician meets Chariot. For me, you've tightened up your solar plexus. Now, when I say that, I mean it in the sense of just gaining confidence, willpower. You know, um, we've, we've spoke... I think it's with you guys. I've, I've said it in several zodiacs. You know, the liver and the kidneys, they all carry emotions and it, they, they affect the solar plexus. Liver is repressed, suppressed anger. Kidneys is, 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 is worry, fear. Um, the, gall, the gallbladder, all connected, holding on to past emotions. So this could be you've worked through them. How you've worked through them, who knows? Five of Wands is my yoga card, it could be yoga. Nine of Wands is Chiron. You might have looked at your Chiron wound and, and done some research and, and, and fixed things or just at least acknowledged. Acceptance is a big, big thing. But incidentally, it's kind of... With the um, the cracked egg here uh, opening up the, the rebirth process, 
there's something about cracked open in the Starseed Oracle where you've hit rock bottom, which you have. I, for me, the rock bottom's in the past. Uh, and this is like realising like, right, I'm cracked open. R as Rumi says, you know, um, the, wound, the wound is where the light gets in. So we, we've opened up the wound. We've really exposed ourselves. How others see you is strength. You, and there's that Leo energy again. You know, with this, 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 you're, you're pursuing gold. You're, you're pursuing your spiritual gold. You're pursuing your, um, turning yourself from lead to gold. And I'll just make me laugh as well because we've had so much um, energy in, in, in Taurus. We, you know, Jupiter and Uranus conjuncting end of April. We've had Mars conjuncting Uranus. People are a little bit wary of Taurus at the moment. It just makes me laugh because the strength card is pushing away the bull. <laughs> this is you like, I'm going for it. I want what I want. Um, but yeah, it, it, you, you've got some sort of determination here. You've got some sort of positive energy that surrounds you. I mean, in this spread of 12 cards, 13 cards, if we, if we count the bottom of the deck, we've got two aces and one, two, three, four, five major arcanas. That's change. That's energy. That's shifting things. Your advice is the empress. Clear space to receive because you are receiving. You're in master manifesting mode and it's because of that conjunction that happened in April. A lot of you might be thinking, well, nothing happened. It did. Energetically, it shifted a lot. Individually, depending on your rising, it could be anywhere in, 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 in the zodiac wheel. But for Taurus itself, it happened in the first house, the house of self, which can go in any direction. And it's, it's, it's really apparent in the outcome because your outcome is the king of pentacles. This is whatever you're touching is turning to gold. And as much as Stuttel Virgo, te technically king of pentacles is a Virgo card, but nine times out of ten, there's always a bull with the King of Pentacles. So I kind of see him as, 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 as you guys. Don't get caught up in gender. This is just living in, in, a, in abundance. You know, you guys rule the second house. The second house is, is, is money. It's Venus. It's, it's abundance. It's living comfortably. And this is what is coming in for you. It's like whatever seeds you're planting is turning into the king. You know, the king is the... And again... Nothing to do against the queens here, but it's the hierarchy of the tarot. The kings at the top. Then we've got the magician. Then we've got the two of cups. Wow. You are manifesting connection. You are manifesting abundance. You are manifesting, you know, the, the, the soulmate of your life. If they're already in your life, this is just a bonding that's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But it, it, it's requiring you to, to kind of restructure. And I say that in the sense of just creating space, which is interesting. Okay. Venus in Libra season is going to be very, very um, interesting for you guys. I don't know why. So Venus in Libra will be your... Um, your sixth house. Okay. Venus could just make daily life flow beautifully. Ven oh, you could have Venus in Libra. Who knows? But there's something about um, Venus in Libra. So pay attention to round about end of August until round about the end of end of August and all of September. It's gonna be it's gonna be quite significant for you guys. Beautiful. You could be seeing a lot of ones. We've got 11-11 with um, uh, the ace, the justice being 11 and the magician being one. We've also got an extra one here. So we've got five ones. So there could be five ones that are... Um, um, why is that standing out for me, five ones? There's a reader that has five ones. Oh God, what's her name? She does pick her cards. Oh, Christ. Someone help me out on that one. Her email's five ones. I don't know why that's come up. So whether she's done a reading that's going to be relevant. Let me just see if I can find her quickly. What's her name? If I 
just type in pick a card, I might get lucky. Oh, here we go, straight away. Aether Ascended, also known as the Cosmic Awakening. Okay, she's just done one an hour ago, and it's got, right now, 515 views. Um, and just the fact that five is the Hierophant, which is Taurus, is standing out for me there. And uh, the options are Pink, Sapphire, Kyanite, and Diamond. So that could be significant. I have no idea what it is. It's only released an hour ago. Um, but that could be significant. Diamond is really standing out. So um, for some of you, watch, watch the Diamond. The Diamond in the Rough. Um, the Magician is giving me the vibes of why I mentioned that conjunction in the end of April. Because the Magician in the Herbal Astrology is ginseng, master manifester, boundless energy, potential, resourcefulness, expansion, ruled by Uranus and Jupiter. All happened <clears throat> in your sign, end of April. The energy is with you. You are flowing fantastically well at the moment. Um, I want to see where the chariot is. The, because we've got the Mercury in uh, in Cancer and we've got Mercury in your outcome with um, the Magician. I also want to see where uh, the world is for lead because we're going from lead to gold. Look at that. The Chariot is with the Hermit and the Fool. Be proud of how far you've come. You've learned so many lessons here. Um, but what you've done is you've highlighted where you maybe gave your power away in terms of your solar plexus. And now it's created an energy of freedom within you. And you're drawing in now the energies that you want. Fantastic. It's the final card, of course it is. There's your final card, the world, lead to gold. Um, so yeah, keep keep decluttering. Whatever it is that needs to go, let it go. Whatever's creating, you know, this is uh, five of wands, can be a card of drama. Whatever's, you know, creating drama, it's gotta go. Whatever's keep uh, creating this abundant ap happiness attitude, more of it, please. Um, Fantastic. Clear the space and open yourself to receive because it's coming. That, that outcome is amazing. Okay, guys, in your extended, let's take a look at the outcome. Let's uh, let's combine that into a, into a card, what we know about it, what we don't know about it, what's happened in the recent past to get there, your advice and potential outcome. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. We have Moon in Sagittarius. We have Scorpio and Libra. Saturn in Leo, Libra, Mercury in Cancer, Leo, Taurus, Libra, Gemini, Virgo, Venus in Cancer, uh, Mars in Gemini, Jupiter in Capricorn, Sun in Virgo, Moon in Libra, Mercury in Virgo, Sagittarius, Cancer, Pisces, Venus in Virgo, Aquarius, Mars in Pisces, and then you guys with the Hierophant next to the Ten of Cups. How wonderful. Wands, cups, pentacles, no swords and swords. Everyone's here. Those are the standouts. Let me know. Take care. See you soon.